One of the basic things in population genetics is a concept known as the Hardy-Weinberg Law. The Hardy-Weinberg Law is a collection of two equations that is used to mathematically calculate the frequencies of alleles within a, the gene pool of a population and the frequency of genotypes within that population. So I need to make sure that you understand some basic ideas. First, population is a group of organisms within a particular area who are all interbreeding with each other. And then you need to understand that a gene pool is this abstract idea. Uh, it's the collective or a collection of all the alleles within a particular population for any trait that you're talking about. For example, let's suppose we had this population here. Now the Hardy-Weinberg equation for describing that gene pool is P plus Q equals 1. Now P is a variable used to represent the frequency of the dominant allele. In this case, I'll be talking about the trait mm, big R for rolling your tongue. Q is the frequency of the recessive allele within that gene pool. Little r in this case, or the inability to roll your tongue. Eh, all right. So if our gene pool, sorry, if our population consisted of somebody who's homozygous dominant, another person who's homozygous dominant, somebody who is heterozygous for the tongue rolling ability, and then somebody who's homozygous recessive, what is P and what is Q in my gene pool? Well, I would solve this simply by counting up one, two, three, four, five big R alleles out of a total number in my gene pool of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight alleles, which gives me 0.625. So P, in this case, is 0.625. Whereas Q is, I could solve this in two ways. One, I could sit there and go, one, two, three, divide by eight. Or I could pop it into my Hardy-Weinberg equation here, P plus Q equals one, and do some subtraction. And I could say, well, if P is 0.625, then I know one minus 0.625 is 0.375. All right? That's pretty straightforward. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when we go to the equation for describing the individual population's genotypes. But don't worry, because you've actually seen this before. What I did is I took my P plus Q equals 1, and I just did what you've done before in your math classes. I squared both sides. You know in math, if you do one thing to one side of the equation, you can do it to the other side of the equation, and things still work out. So I get P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. What's P squared? P squared is the frequency of individuals who are homozygous dominant. In my example of tongue rolling, it's big R, big R. 2PQ is the frequency of big R, little r, or heterozygous individuals. Q squared is the frequency of little r, little r, or homozygous recessive individuals. And again, this is for a population that's in something called genetic equilibrium. That's where there's no changes going on from one generation to the next in terms of these frequencies either of the genotypes or frequencies of the alleles within the gene pool. Now an example kind of problem that you're going to face when you're studying Hardy-Weinberg is one like this. For example, in a population, 0.16 of that population, i.e. 16% of the population, cannot roll their tongues. What is the frequency of big R little r's? Now a common thing is for kids to go, 0.16 can't roll their tongues. That's Q. No. Remember, Q is describing the gene pool. It's what fraction of the total DNA in the entire population is the little r. You know that everybody has two copies of every gene, so somebody has to have two copies of little r in order to show non-rolling. So 0.16 is little r, little r, Q squared. So I pop that in. Q squared equals 0.16. Hmm. All right, what do I do next? Well, that's when I whip out my math skills and I take the square root of both sides. If Q squared is 0.16, then Q is the square root of 0.16 or 0.4. Now, I go to my first of the Hardy-Weinberg equations, P plus Q equals 1, and if I plug in some numbers, let's see, uh, P winds up being P plus 0.4 equals 1, P equals 0.6. All right, so now I go up to here. Which one of these is heterozygous individuals? Big R, little r, 2PQ. Ah, so 2PQ equals 
2 times 0.6 times 0.4, which tells me that the frequency is 0.48. So roughly half of the population is heterozygous. They can still roll their tongue, but they are actually carrying that little r, that non-rolling allele. But it's recessive, so they don't show it. Now, here's a little trick. I'm going to let you in on a secret that biology teachers have. We love to mess with your heads. They will rarely, unless your teacher is really nice, they'll rarely say 0.16 cannot roll their tongues. What they'll do is they'll say 0.84 can roll their tongues. And then we'll sit in the back room tittering, <laughs> we got them. Because a lot of kids will sit there and go 0.84 can roll their tongues and they'll assume 0.84 is big R, little r. Or sorry, big R, big R. In actuality, 0.84 is this plus that. So the trick to solving Hardy-Weinberg's is look for the Q squared, look for the homozygous recessives. So if they say, uh, 0.91 percent can, or 0.91 can roll their tongues. You know that 0.09 cannot, and that's what you're supposed to solve for. Okay? A little trick that I'm telling you guys. I don't tell it my, to my own students. I want to trick them. Now, this is all math. This is all based on statistics. And if you've ever taken any kind of statistics class, you know that there's a bunch of assumptions. When I flip a coin, I assume 50% of the time it's going to come up heads, 50% of the time it'll come up tails. What are the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg equations? First, this is assuming we're describing a large population. You know that if I flip a coin once, it's not going to come up half heads, half tails. It's either going to be 100% heads or 100% tails. If I flip it 10 times, it could come up seven times heads, three times tails. You're not going to sit there and scream that the end of the universe is coming. No, but if you flipped it a thousand times and you got 700 heads and 300 tails, then you might assume either there's something weird going on with the coin or there's something weird going on with the rules of the universe. No mutations. If you flip a coin, one side heads and the other side becomes a wing. That's weird. So this assumes that if a population isn't undergoing genetic change, one of the assumptions is that there's no mutations. Another assumption is no migration. If you flip a coin, all of a sudden somebody tosses down their own coin, you know, what? That changes things. So no people moving in with their tongue rolling abilities or none of our non-rolling cousins leaving. You also have to assume mating is random for that particular trait so that people aren't sitting there going, can you roll your tongue? Hubba hubba. All right? And no natural selection. There's no advantage or disadvantage to that particular trait, whether it's tongue rolling, the shape of your earlobes, whether or not you have a widow's peak, or whether or not your thumb goes straight up like this or bends backwards weirdly. All right. So these are the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg equation. And I'm betting you're thinking in your head what I used to think when I first started this stuff. Most of the time, one of these is going to be violated, and if not more. So why ever use the Hardy-Weinberg equation? I used to think that even when I was teaching it until one of my colleagues explained to me exactly why this is so useful. This gives us our control group. Because you know in an experiment you always need to have your control group and your experimental group. Your control group is just like your experimental group except for hopefully one thing is different. Well, if you're studying say humans, you cannot get the funding and the legal ability to take 500 million humans put them on another planet Earth, and then wait 10,000 years and see how their population, how genetics have changed to study their evolution. It's kind of hard and expensive. Instead, we can use some math and we can say, well, assuming these things, we shouldn't see any difference in our predictions from Hardy-Weinberg and our reality, human genetics. And then if you do see differences, you can say, well, did I have a large population? Am I studying the population of China? That's a large population. I didn't break that assumption. Are there mutations going on? Maybe, maybe not. Did this happen due to migration? I can start figuring out, narrowing in, what exactly is causing the difference between my prediction from Hardy Weinberg and reality. And scientists have used this to figure out all sorts of interesting things. For example, some forms of diabetes you would expect should be essentially gone because they're deleterious. They can lead to you dying. So why is um, some forms of diabetes so common? Scientists had calculated that if you have a certain uh, disease and it's 
more prevalent in the population than a certain frequency, then there's got to be some reason why it's still there. And it turns out this has led to some people suspecting that adult onset diabetes, type 2 diabetes, may be in some circumstances actually an advantage. It may be due to people having highly efficient body systems. And so their metabolism is very efficient, which is great if you're going through a famine or things like that. But if you have easy access to McDonald's and all those other things, then it becomes a disadvantage. Now, let's, using our assumptions, let's see if our original population was in Hardy-Weinberg e equilibrium. Now, the way I test this, let me grab a pen, is I'd say, okay, I know what P is, so what about P squared? P squared equals 0.625 squared. All right, so I do the math and I discover that P squared should equal 0 0.39. 0 0.39, let's see, in my actual population, one, two out of four, 0.5. So 0.5 of my real population is homozygous dominant, but I predicted through Hardy-Weinberg, only 39% of them, or 0.39, should be homozygous dominant. <gasps> I violated something. Well, it's assumption number one. This is a small population. Four individuals is not sufficient. So that's one reason why this population is not in a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.